Hi, everybody. I'm back, and so are you. Um, I hope that everyone is as healthy physically and emotionally as possible during this crisis. I want you to reach out to me with any difficulties you might be having. Um, I'll be posting some resources on announcements, like um, I just came across some resources of where you can get food if you're having trouble getting food. Um, but there are other kinds of help you might need, too. Um, the counseling services are all available online. And the times in your life when you're going to have unlimited access to free, unlimited counseling services are not going to be that huge. So there's nothing wrong with taking advantage of them while you have them before you have health insurance that limits how many visits or whatever. Um, but anyway, this is mostly an orientation video to us working together online. I'm going to go over the changes in the syllabus, the new things on Blackboard, and the changes to Journal 5, which is what you're doing for this week, although I hope you're also thinking about your paper, but um, we will talk about how those two things are very, very connected. Um, the videos that follow this are more content. So this is our learning about how to write a paper week, since you guys have a paper due in two weeks. This isn't an English class. Not requiring several drafts, but we're sticking a little of it in here. What does it have to do with CT? Well, so far we've been learning to find the errors in other people's arguments. Now it's time for you guys to learn how to make an argument yourself for some opinion that you believe that doesn't have those errors. So the point of this exercise is to show you how to use evidence well. That's definitely part of the CT curriculum. And to make an argument that does not, is not entirely black and white, um, does not contain, you know, wishful thinking, logical fallacies, um, ambiguities, all these things we've learned about, you know, how to spot in other people's arguments. Um, so that's how it relates to what we're doing in CT. Okay, but now on to the nuts and bolts things. Let's look at the syllabus. So if you click on syllabus, you can see my blackboard here. Syllabus. You'll see there's an updated syllabus under the old one. Okay, and so you have this. I think even faster than loading that for me to just open it on Word. So we've changed from a daily syllabus to a weekly syllabus, okay? So each week is kind of gonna be its own unit. And you have various things you have to do in that week. So this week, here's your big assignments, Journal 5. The assignments have basically stayed the same except that there's no group project, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Read the announcement, which is my weekly message, and watch videos before writing Journal 5. Sometimes it doesn't matter. But this week, it matters because I'm going to talk about writing the kind of paragraph I was hoping going to write for Journal 5. If you've already written Journal 5, don't worry about it. Just watch the videos. Okay. Um, complete the quotation activity before writing Journal 5. <laughs> okay. I think it'll be helpful because it's all about the nuts and bolts of how to cite. It's really a citation and quotation activity. Okay. And quote correctly. And Journal 5 is meant to show me that you can do that. Okay. This is actually wrong, and I'm going to fix it. There is no fallacy activity. It's bad. It's bad. It's not there. There is no fallacy activity because I made the fallacy activity the discussion board. So these things are one, okay? So every week, I'm going to ask you to post twice on the discussion board. Two or three sentences is enough, okay? I agree is not enough, or I disagree. You have to tell us why. Okay, or show some new piece of evidence, different reason. Okay, um, but this week's discussion board is not very discussion like. As you'll see, I made it a fallacy activity. There are fallacies there, and I want you to tell me which there are examples of people making fallacies there, and I want you to tell me which fallacy they're making um, of the 10 that we know so far. And I, I list them in the initial discussion post, so we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, so. We're being a little flexible here at Mass Bay. At least I hope your teachers are being a little flexible about when you turn things in because our lives have all turned upside down and we have childcare and different work hours and all this. 
So I've made the due dates for all these things Wednesday, all the big assignments, instead of Monday. I'd like you to get them in on Wednesday, okay? But I'm not going to mark them late if you get them in any time that week, okay? And I'm defining the week as finishing midnight Sunday. All right. So that's also when this activity, which is pass-fail, is done and when your discussion post, post discussion board posts are due is Sunday by midnight okay and so each week you have a list of things to do and you have to get them done by Sunday at midnight although I think you should spread out the work and do some of it before the other thing you might want to think about doing this week is starting to work on your paper um, your paper is due the week of April 13th, so you do have some time. And Journal 5 does actually have you work on your paper a little bit. Next week, not next week, the week after, okay, the second week of our online learning, you have a short reading, okay, which you're going to need um, in order to participate in the discussion board. Um, but you don't have anything big written do the idea is to work on your paper which is due the next week and the next week you have reading too okay so you really I wouldn't wait till Sunday of this week to do your paper so most of the to-do lists are the kind of the same every week read the announcement watch the videos complete the activity post twice on the discussion board and work on whatever big homework was always on the syllabus all right, so that's the syllabus. It's up there under updated syllabus. You can download it and look at it yourself. Okay, let's go back to Blackboard. So on Blackboard, you have two new tabs up in your main menu. One is My Grades. The reason I put the My Grades up there front and center is because I want everyone to take a look at their grades and see how they're doing for midterm. The weighted total is how you're doing for midterm. If you are failing, it is probably because you are missing work. And if you look at my grades, my grades doesn't work very well for the teacher because I haven't handed anything in, but I will show you anyway. So my grades has a list of the assignments and how many points you got out of how many points there were to get. Okay, for me it all says upcoming, I'm the teacher, it doesn't show up exactly right, okay? Um, look at what you're missing, okay? And do it, you can still get some points, okay? I, for the journals, the lowest I go is 15 for something late, even if it's more than three weeks late. You can still get some points. There are very few of you who haven't handed in the test and you need to email me so we can talk about how you can get me that test. You either have to do it online or you have to take a picture of what you wrote, you know, if you wrote it on paper and email it to me or something like that, okay? Um, but I need everyone to check their grades and see how they're doing at midterm. The weighted total should tell you how you're doing. Okay. The next new tab is classwork. For me, it just has this weird uh, square because I'm not showing it to you yet because the videos aren't on it yet. I'm making it right now. Um, but yours will be visible and will not have a weird square. Okay. If you click on classwork, you are going to start to see a learning module for each week. Okay. I'm only working on the first one so far. If you click into it, look, it's week one of our online learning. Okay. So first of all, I have the announcement, the weekly message, okay? Your job is to read it. It talks about our goals for the week and gives you a list of what you have to do, okay? Secondly, there are the videos, like this one that you're watching. <laughs> uh, presumably you've already figured out how to click on that one or you wouldn't be here. So next is an activity. So let me show you the activity. So all the activities are pass, fail, done, and not done. Okay, or not done. So all you have to do is try. I do recommend, however, that if you feel like it will help you, you can do them more than once until you get the answers right. Okay? Um, that's just a way you can use it for better learning. The activities are 15 minutes long or less. It took me forever to code them in. But um, 
they're not long, okay? So we're not talking about a major, major thing I'm giving you to do. And basically it's just replacing a point where I would have put examples on the board and we would have discussed whether they were right and wrong and stuff like that. So this activity is about correctly doing quotations and citations. So you need to watch those videos first, okay? All right, so it says that in the instructions. So question one. Is this citation right or wrong? It's very SAT looking. I'm asking you to look at this citation, although you can read my fun fact. My fun fact is about why there's 5,280 feet in a mile. I just picked an article, okay? And um, the question is, is this citation done correctly or not? So there's some things like that. There's some things that ask you what is wrong. Error, look at the next one. How would you fix it? Okay, so I've mixed up questions about using quotations correctly and correctly citing things in your work. Um, you will notice that I have added to the jur well, assignment five a two paragraphs that have correct examples of quotations and citations. So you can also look at that before or after you do this. Again, Everything says it's worth zero points because it's pass-fail. You just have to try it. That's all you have to do, okay? You're not getting graded on how many you get right or wrong, okay? Um, you do, however, get points for doing it. You know, we should have looked at that part of the syllabus. Let's look at the part of syllabus that shows the points. Okay. Uh-oh, I closed the syllabus. But we can open it from the syllabus tab. Yes, we can leave the page. Okay, let's open that up again. Just as in class, sometimes you have to wait for me to put stuff up on the board. Okay, let's look at the points. All right. I am going to be giving you this week a class participation grade for the in-person part of the semester. It's done. There's nothing you can do to change it. It's how much you participated in class discussions for the part of the semester. It's out of 85. Okay, because some of those points went to the discussion board participation, stuff like that, and also some of the points from the uh, presentations, stuff like that. So um, it's out of 85. So if you got 75 to 85, you like got an A, you're awesome. If you got 65 to 75, you got a B, you're awesome. If you got 60, you were willing to talk when I called on you, but you didn't really volunteer much, okay? And that's about as low as it goes. Okay, so here's the new things. For participating in the discussion board, two posts a week. Spread them out is my advice. Post early and then give your classmates a chance to post some and then reply to somebody, okay? Or you can answer two of my questions, that's fine, okay? Two posts a week, they only have to be two or three sentences. I'm not limiting you, but that's fine. Also, asking a question and starting a thread is another way you can participate. You can say what you're confused about, okay? And that's fine participation too. Start any thread you want, okay, about this week's topics uh, and ask what you're confused about and that counts as a post. Okay, extra credit is possible if you post more than twice. I can, I will give you extra points. Um, so that's worth 60, which is 10 a week. Then the other classwork is the activities, like the pass-fail activities I showed you. All you have to do is try it, and you get the 10 points for that week. Okay? All right. Um, so yeah, the other thing to note on here is, yeah, due dates have changed till Wednesday, so that should be your goal, okay, so that you have time to watch videos first and things like that, now that we're doing it kind of more of a weekly schedule. Um, except, and the only exceptions are the fake news is going to have to be on in on Monday because the fake news is going to be a discussion thread. So just like we put the fake ads up on the board and then everyone found the ambiguities and omissions and stuff like that, the fake news is going to have fallacies in it that you have created. We're going to put them up on the discussion board and then people are supposed to find the fallacies. So we will need those at the beginning of the week so people have something to post on. And the final test, uh, the logical fallacies test, was always planned to be the end 
of the week. So it's the end. So it's um, May 8th, which is the last day of classes, which is the end. Okay. Finals week, you have nothing due. There is no final. However, because of the way we've been pushed back, and I'm hoping the university is going to be a little bit um, permissive in how many days it gives me to get your grades in, I will continue to accept late and missing work through finals week. Okay, so you have till the Friday of finals week to get in things that are late and missing. All right, so that's the flexibility that I can give you. Still have to do the work, okay? None of these assignments, except for the fact that I took away, um, what's it called, the, the group project, the group presentation, none of these assignments have changed. What you have left is journal five, the paper, the persuasive essay, journal six, the fake news, test two, that's all the same, okay? Because you're still getting credit for completing a whole college course, okay? So the big things are the same. Um, we're just being a little bit more flexible about when in the week you can hand them in, okay? And allowing people a little makeup time at the end. You still have to do them if you want to pass the class, okay? Alrighty, let's go back to classwork. Okay, we gotta go into the week. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you about the activity, well, I'll just tell you, is that it will give you some hints after you get something wrong. So, so the tricky part to see how you did, unfortunately, to show you how to see how you did, I'm gonna have to click random answers. Let's just say everything's wrong, 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 which is not right. Wrong, wrong, wrong. We'll just click wrong. We'll just click the first one and everything as quickly as possible. Yes, we will. It's got 11 questions. The last one is like kind of more a challenge question. It's about what's wrong with this paragraph rather than what's wrong with this little bit. Ooh, and we can't, so we, can't, we have to move me in order to click submit. Okay, save and submit. You do need to submit so I can see that you tried. Even though it's worth zero points, I mean, really it's worth 10 points, okay? You do have to submit. So here's, sorry, I'm covering myself up. It'll fix itself in a minute. Okay, so here's the tricky technological part. It's not that tricky, but you need to know. If you wanna see how you did, you have to scroll down and click this little okay, which is always in the bottom right-hand corner. If you do that, Okay. <laughs> It'll show you over here whether you're right or wrong. Okay. So I was wrong, you know, because, okay. And it'll give you some response feedback. So you understand why you were wrong. Okay. It'll even give you response feedback if you get it right, just to make sure you understand why you were right. And it wasn't, you know, in case you were just making your best guess. Okay. So part of the learning is to look at that feedback. Next, let's talk about discussion boards, which is the last thing we're gonna talk about in this video. All right, so the discussion board is right here in your weekly things to do. You also can get it from the discussions tab, but it's right here. Usually it's a discussion. This week I made it into kind of a logical fallacies activity, so I have the instructions here. And if you click on it, it's got 28 examples of people making fallacies. You can pick one and you can give your best guess as the fallacy. It's totally fine if you do that in like one sentence because this really asks for kind of a one sentence answer. Um, some of them, there may be more than one possible fallacy that would fit, okay? Because these ideas overlap to a degree. So you can reply to some to one that's been already answered within or could it be this okay i'm going to be active on the discussion board as active as i can be okay responding to you um making sure that you know um i kind of challenge you if you pick one that's not very right <laughs> all right um and then for your second post if you can't find somebody's to um to add to is make up an example for a classmate to try or do one of those examples 
So this thread will be longer. Okay? So, for this week, you can identify a fallacy. Let's just look at a random one. Let's click into 25. Whoop, will move me back to my rightful place in the bottom corner. Well, it's time for a decision. Will you contribute $20 to our environmental fund, or are you on the side of environmental destruction? Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I do tell you in the... I do remind you in the instructions which 10 fallacies we've talked about. And in fact, if you need to review those, which wouldn't be a bad idea, remember you can go into either logical fallacies or wikis. Logical fallacies. Okay, you can go to the fallacy wiki. And all 10 of the fallacies that we've talked about are right here. Okay. I added without you appeal to irrelevant authority. So that's something new for you to read. We talked about it when we talked about sources, but we didn't write it into the fallacy wiki. So I did that and I made up some examples. Okay. Um, I also put the video for appeal that he just calls it appeal to authority, the idea channel video in the videos. So you can watch that if you want to, um, or you can just read this, which is my explanation of it. Okay. I think we've gone over everything we need to go over. Okay. There is an announcement about how to join me in WebEx. And so if you want to, um, I will be there uh, every Monday at 11 for questions and answers and any discussions you want to have. And so I hope to see some of you. Um, and that is it for this video. Thanks.